What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to TTG Place Near. This is another post commentary, and this video is not going to have a lot of talking in it, but it will have a lot of cutscenes, that's for sure. Damn it! Where'd they go? Get up! Don't let him escape! Of machinery here. Yeah, but I don't know how much we can actually use. Oh, wow! Check this out! It looks brand new! Hey, be careful there. I'm fine! Oh, no! Huh? No! 
The noise of the intruders caused the structure to fail. They should have proceeded with more caution. One intruder has perished. So that was a huge chunk of cutscene right there. A lot of cutscene. Um, like I said in one of the previous videos, this second playthrough really adds a lot more context to things. And I think this particular, the, the, this and the the winning get the two most like extra context in comparison to when you originally played through it. And we will be doing the wedding in this episode as well. But uh, this episode is mainly cutscenes, which is kind of hilarious. I just finished editing it and it's... I'm not going to be talking much throughout it, but uh, yeah, I love the idea that uh, once again, it's another situation where the shades are kind of in a position where they're not really doing anything wrong and they're just getting blamed for uh, for other people's fuck-ups, basically. And it, it's it's just so weird. I guess like another game that did this was uh, Spec Ops The Line, which actually I don't want to spoil it in case I ever do a playthrough of it. If you haven't played Spec Ops The Line, even if you're not into shooters, I highly recommend that you do pu purely for the story because it's quite well handled, in my opinion. I know other people have made arguments for why it's not, but it does a very similar thing to this. But yeah, I love the idea, especially this one, because the, the shade is just a child in this. Which makes it that much worse, the idea that you're going to be going into... Well, we already killed them once, basically. I find that really fascinating that the, the game goes in that sort of direction. Like, I can't really think of many games that would... I don't know what it is with me in these mouse tiles. I guess they sell for my price. Yeah, I can't think of that many games that do what this game does in terms of that sort of stuff. Um, so basically, I skipped out the whole, like, getting to the dungeon. I think the reason I left this one in is because this is the one where we get the metal alloy. Because if you remember the first playthrough, in order to get this kid to, uh, in order to get deeper into the junkyard to get to the key, we have to get a particular metal alloy from a robot, which then you can then use to get unlock a certain sword to get deeper in there. It's a bit dumb. I think it was actually a joke in there. I think I might cut it out where. <laughs> I talk about the fact that they already uh, already got the sword once in video game logic. But yeah, how's everyone doing anyway? You guys still enjoying this series? It's almost done now, I swear. After this episode, I've only got to record three more, maybe four, and that's it. So thanks for sticking with me all this time if you have. It means it means a lot to me. But, uh, I, I'm, I'm not looking forward to having to come back to this environment again, but I do love these robots and the fact that this is the exact same robot design as the end boss, which I think is actually kind of interesting, the fact that they're the same. This one's obviously a lot, nowhere near as tough as the end boss one, but not by a long shot. Huh? There you go. Down he goes. So many pretty little explosions. A large seagoing vessel that carries freight and passengers over bodies of water. You have taught me much, Kalia. You have helped to expand my vocabulary. You have instructed me in the ways of the outside world. Broken up this romance between, not a romance, this friendship between the little little shade and his robot pal, which is kind of sad. They just want to go see the world together, and, and now you know when you first play through, they'd be completely, completely wrecked it up. So sad, but that opens things up because now we get to go to the wedding, and this gets some other context as well, which is very, changes things a lot. Thank <laughs> you. 
So as you no doubt remember, the uh, wolf kills the king's new bride when we get there. And uh, I did think it was unusual in my first playthrough, the fact that we did have these wolves here in the desert, because as the characters point out, that doesn't make sense. And it's good that I like the way that they actually make that a contextual thing that kind of pulls things together. I will say I don't think that cutscene is necessarily as well handled as it could have been. I think it's a little bit confusing. I think what's happening, I don't know for sure, but I think what's happening is that they've trapped one wolf, or the the, the uh, people of Fikade have trapped one wolf, and that lures away the leader and a group. And while those guys are away, the guard, the army comes in and you know slaughters a whole bunch of them. So I think that's what happened there, but I don't know for sure because it's not as well. I don't know, like it's not as well told as it could have been. Like, I get the feeling that's what happened, but I guess that's up, that's up for debate. But uh, I, it did surprise me how graphic it was with the, with the actual death of the wolves. Animal cruelty is something that obviously is very, very touchy subject for a lot of people, and for good reason. And seeing uh, bloodied up wolves is kind of... It isn't pleasant, even if they're low poly, super not well rendered ones. It's just a little unsettling. Not more 
the shade. I would rethink this course of action, King. Ahead lies a battle you cannot win. ゼルガンゾイ Violence never solves anything, guys. It should be the <laughs> is really the message I think of this part. It's kind of funny that you know. I think neither party is to blame for what's happening here, and at the same time, both of them are. But that's the nature of that's human nature at the very least. I think this does a good job of reflecting that in a lot of ways. But yeah, this bloody wolves kind of creeped me out. At least I didn't have eyes and stuff hanging out. But we're already almost done here. Like I said, I'm not going to do a whole lot of talk in this episode. It's mainly cutscene stuff. for this area. Almost. Uh, it's an interesting boss fight. I quite like it because it's so different to everything else in the game. 
uh, him being so small definitely really changes the feel of the fight compared to everything else. Everything else there is. It is kind of annoying that while he's up in this area here, you can't actually hurt him. I hate it when games do that, where they put arbitrary like blocks on things like that. You kind of need to, as you saw the first time around, you really, I don't know what the number is, but you need to hit a certain number of wolves and then that'll trigger an event where he jumps down, but I do like this boss fight for being quite different, even if it's not particularly difficult at all. In fact, I'd probably describe, say it's one of the easiest boss fights in the game. But it's also probably one of the uh, most potent in terms of what's happening. It's one of the least abstract. A lot of the other shade bosses you fight, like Wendy is clearly all the souls of all the dead villagers that you've taken, like rolled into one, but that's a very abstract concept. And it's sort of the same like with the, with the little shade living inside the robot, because it is it is a robot, and even though you know it's protecting it, there's that layer of extra abstraction there because it is a robot. That we're making this boss fight like a wolf, something that, or a dog, which, you know, most people like dogs. They keep them as pets, not necessarily wolves, but dogs. It kind of, it, it, I think it's touching on a level that the other bosses don't manage to be, if that makes sense. Mechanically, I just like how fast it is. There's no other shade that's anywhere near as quick as this or as agile or nimble. Which, you know, makes it a little hard to hit sometimes. A spinning attack it does is actually really cool. It doesn't make a lick of sense, but that doesn't stop it from being rad. But yeah, this boss is tough to hit at the very least. It's actually really hard to read his animations watching this back now. This movement is very, very erratic. A lot of the other enemies have, like, pretty easy to read tells in their movements, but... Not so much this guy, but, you know, especially at this point of the game, he goes down super, super easily. Barely a challenge at all, despite his cool moveset. Just too OP, I suppose. Down he goes. I, don't, I know they want you to feel a little bit bad about this, and, you know, I think they succeeded for the most part. It, it doesn't feel that much like a victory when you finally kill this wolf on the second time around at least. The first time, yeah, but not the second. And that's pretty much it for this episode. It, it, it is sad. The wolf obviously had a had a master or an owner or someone to take care of it in the past. Whether or not the, the the desert was still forest back then, that's another question entirely. But you know, he had had a relationship with humans in the past, 
that he wanted to look out for him, and it just didn't just didn't pan out that way. This game is so sad like that. There's not like a single happy ending in the whole fucking thing. But it still manages to keep a sense of humor, which is something that it's a really hard balance to maintain, and I can't think of anything else that manages to be as funny or as end as miserable as this game. It's an incredibly hard balance to, to manage, and in fact the translation team managed to pull it off, and I think is absolutely incredible in a lot of ways. But anyway, that's it for this episode. Next time we are going to go back into the junk heap and we are going to take care of that robot, sadly. So until then, peace out and have a good one.